Hey, Dave Lacalio from Head Games Builder Works. Today I got a special one for you. We are doing a B58 Toyota build up for our guys at National Speed. This thing's gonna make over a thousand horsepower and we're gonna show you through our whole process. We're doing some research and development, flow testing, the whole nine yards. See it here. So one stop to every cylinder head that goes through our shop and uh, when we do some research and development, the first time we're doing it, it'll see the flow bench. Now we test valve jobs, we test how we blend in the valve jobs, we test valves, we test everything to ensure that the customer gets the product that they're looking for. What part of this process uh, do we share? We only share the stock flow numbers because honestly, there is no gain in us sharing our phone numbers because then it's a race to the bottom. And when I say the bottom, I mean because people only look at the 500 lift number for whatever reason, even though you can't buy a camshaft that's 500 lift for these things. And you got a bunch of people who are making things gigantic to impress the customer. We focus on performance and what we can do so we don't share. Gonna flow to the industry standard, which is 28 inches. Uh, now this is the old way, but we still use it. And we have the flow com, which is also gonna show us our 20 inches and our CFM at that 28. So we got here is the head set up on the flow bench and we have a fixture. We have, we made this piece is actually for the 2JZ. We made this like 20 years ago and we have a dial indicator. This is gonna open up both valves at the same time and we're gonna flow this thing every 50 thousandths of an inch, and we're gonna start at 100 lift, and we're gonna go to 400 lift. Something else to point out is the orifice. Now, you can see here when we have a stock port, and usually there's an intake manifold over it. Now, we put an orifice here, and the orifice is made so the air on the flow bench is easily gone into the intake port. It doesn't have any sharp edges. Intake ports don't like sharp edges, so we make this nice little rounded piece for out of modeling clay and we get the results we need. We teamed up with GSE Power Division to come up with some really cool parts for the B58. They help us with our S55 kits. Now we don't use their valve spring, but they've also helped us with the retainer and getting the valve spring correct. So we had an idea of what's gonna work and what's gonna not work for a thousand plus horsepower. First up, valve spring. The valve spring stats are the best that has ever been made for a B58 thus far. It is hundred pounds on the seat and we are at almost 200 open. Most guys are at like 75 pounds on the seat and 180 open. And that extra 20 pounds is really gonna help you starve off from valve float or just trying to keep the valve spring in check, right? Because we're gonna be throwing a lot of boost at this thing. Our single spring is already made 1200 horsepower in the S55. So I believe that although different springs act differently, I believe that the spring pressures for the B58 that's with the GSC kit is gonna work perfectly for what we're trying to do. And was with any spring kit, they include some titanium retainers. You have separate ones for intake and exhaust because the heights are different on each side. It's pretty cool. GSC came up with some valve seals, so now we don't have to go to BMW and pay a billion dollars for valve seals. When designing the exhaust valve, here you have a stock valve and a GSC valve. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the stock valve has a very thin margin. The margin is the area right here. Sorry, the valve keeps moving. It's really afraid of me. The GSC valve has a thicker margin. That thicker margin is gonna take heat away from the valve. Time for some pocket porting. So I have my Makita. GDO 906 grinder and the Head Games half inch high helix, oh no, this is super spiral burr, and uh, we're ready to grind. You'll notice there's quite a bit of material that's kind of stuck in here. 
This is very noticeable on pretty much every DI car, every DI cylinder head we work on that has some kind of choked up on the intake side. And we think that that's so that air goes into the center of the port because here's the injector and it would push the air into the center here for better combustion. Now you'll notice that the valve guides are in it. Most of the time we do not use the valve guides when we're doing any of these videos and that's because there's no room around it. Now this head's gonna be on and off the flow bench so I left the guides in it. We're gonna try to port around it and uh, we'll see if we can get around it. Now GSE is gonna provide some bronze guides so I'm not worried about hitting them for these type of things. We're just trying to experiment at the moment. Here we are, it's all roughed in, and now we're gonna check the sizing. Now, I also wanna make sure that I mention that here is the 45 degree angle of the valve seat. Now, this 45 degree angle is what the valve seats on. And you can see, there is almost no material beyond that. And I say that because I'm sure there's gonna be somebody who's gonna to wanna to put an oversized valve in it, and it literally just won't fit on the valve seat. And the chamber, although we're gonna open this up, it's very shrouded. And I just don't think that an oversized valve here is warranted. Now here's some visual for you. This is the factory port. And this is what we just did. When we talk about the short turn, this is supposed to be a short turn radius. As you can see, they don't really make it a radius. It's more like a shelf, but we're gonna fix that. This is for the internet guys to always say that I'm wrong or I do things inaccurately. Here you go. So this is from the factory. You can see this thing kind of grabs right here. But look at this. And go back and forth. It don't grab as big as hell. That is because it's a casting, not an accurate part. For the guys that saw that I actually, I hit the valve guides on both sides of the exhaust, just shows that you really have to push these in. I probably should have done that, but we're replacing them anyway, and I want to do less work putting it on and off the flow bench. Now for some measurements. Now we have not done anything with the bowl on the valve job yet, and that is going to be the true test, right? So I just want to show you that now, once I get past that seat, now we're the same size. up for this build is combustion chambers. Now, DI, combustion chambers, all you internet know-it-alls and keyboard commandos are probably gonna blow me up saying, there is no way you should be doing that. Well, let me tell you successfully, we have done it to almost every genre that has a DI and we make great power with them. We make up to 1200 horsepower with it. So we're just gonna go with what we know. And could it be wrong? Absolutely, but you will see it here if we are. Here's a little explanation you'll see here. This is one we did. Here is the is stock. Now, stock, you'll see how there's a lot of hot spots. Now, there's like a ledge here. There is a hot spot here, and it's very tight and really sharp. And now, they say these things are here for the DI, and I guess, uh, you know, a lot of the DI stuff is for startup and the 
we blended all that in. Now I didn't make the chamber bigger per se, I just softened all of, like I shaped this, so you can see here, I shaped this, and I shaped around the spark plug. Now the spark plug is very important to note because on the S55 BMWs, we see a lot of cracks. They go from the spark plug to the valve seats, it's a very common issue. Now it never causes an issue where you have to wreck the head, but it also is very detonation prone if it causes misfires and stuff because they have this stuff so sharp and the, comp and the spark plug sits out really far. And the other part of this is it's gonna blend the combustion chamber into the valve job. So it's gonna blend it right into the top angle of the valve job. Now, how do I get that done? So we take a valve. This is just a regular valve we have, and this is the margin right here, this part right here. What we do to protect the valve seat and to blend it all in is we will take this 45 degree angle that the valve usually sits on the valve seat with, and we're gonna make it razor sharp, such as this guy. So you see how it's razor sharp? Because it's razor sharp, I could put it on the valve seat and it completely blends in. You don't have any kind of edges and then I can blend the combustion chamber into that. The valve is not reusable. I get that question all the time. People freaking out about me wrecking a valve into a combustion chamber. We are not reusing these things. They are a tool. So now we have the combustion chamber valves in. Again, they're a tool, they're not to be reused. And you can see that a little tiny bit of the top angle is showing. That's fine, you don't want a lot of the top angle showing. You just want like a little bit because it won't get hit. It's just gonna blend right in here when you use a grinder and a sander. All this stuff will just blend right in and you'll blend the whole combustion chamber into the top angle. Here's a tech tip. If you have a valve that doesn't sit at the right height. So now the valve should sit as I said, like it should blend it right into the combustion chamber. But if it sits low and you think you're gonna hit the valve seat, you can put tape. See, I'll put tape around it and I'll cut the top off. So that way I'm gonna raise it up just enough to be usable. Here's the tools that I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna start off with the half inch super spiral burr from Head Gains Motorworks. Now I cut them down because I'm doing combustion chambers. I don't need to be six inches far on it. And so we got four inches. Then I'm gonna blend it in some of the tight spots with the Head Games Deburr Burr. Uh, this is gonna make it so I can get into like some really tight spots that you can't get into with a bigger burr. GDO 906 grinder. Uh, this is the double cut burr. So this is the 3 8 from Head Games Motorworks. We're gonna do this one too. And this is gonna make it so everything is just nice and pretty uh, smooth to sand. How am I gonna sand it? We're gonna use 60 grit first. 60 grit is going to make all the marks go away. And then we hit it with the sanding disc. Now you might wanna see in my other videos where I modified the disc holder so that way it's nice and cushy goes around it these are the sanding discs and i use this also to get the marks away get any bumps and makes it all smooth then lastly hit it with a 120 this the 120 is for the finishing and for making it just basically look good and last but not least scotch bright by hand you just go over it just kind of making it nice and pretty And next off, this thing is going to get cleaned and milled and then cleaned again and assembled. Follow the process. <sighs> a 
last step in this tour for this B58 is going to be checking out the spring. We use a GSC Beehive. This is new for the B58. And uh, we had some really favorable results from it. So we're gonna stick it here in our Buxton spring tester. All right, that concludes our B58 buildup. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about our R&D process and the things that we go into when doing a new cylinder head. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm always in the comments. Toodles.